Okay, we're in the final video for display list, and in this video you're going to learn to work with children by index and work with children by name. Let's take a look at the notes. So in part E, you're going to use multiple children in the display list, and you're going to reference them by index number. And in part F, you're going to work with the display list by name, and I really like this one, so we'll get to that soon. But let's start off by taking a look at the code that you'll be writing in this section. So once again, you're going to instantiate your ball, but you're going to add it to the stage using a for loop. So here's my for loop right here. And it actually works really simply if you're not used to for loop. Basically, you just declare a variable and you just count through a number. We're going to count through three, zero through two, since it's less, i is less than three. So basically what happens is, is when i is less than three, this for loop will be executed and it's iterated i plus plus each time. So it goes from zero, one, and two. It's going to create your ball and then it's going to add that ball to the stage and then we're going to start placing that ball on the stage by basically adjusting the y and x parameters we'll show that to you in the code in a moment and finally you're going to use your remove button add listener that we talked about last time and your takeaway function to remove those balls from the stage hey let's run the code and take a look at it so we're in the action script portion right now let's go ahead and run the code we'll go control test movie so this is what the code does it stacks up three balls in a row one, two, three, and when you roll the button, you click one, the uh, first one is removed, the second one is removed, and then the final one is removed. And we're going to go into the code now and explain how this works. Let's go back to the code. Once again, we instantiate our ball. Then we have our for loop that creates the three balls. Uh, we set them at an x position in the kind of toward the center of the stage at two x equals 200. And then basically we stack them by adding 120 to each new ball with an iteration of i times the height of the ball. So basically we just stack them all up in a, uh, in a, a column as you saw earlier. Now we have the remove button. You've seen that earlier in the previous tutorials. Each time we hit that, the takeaway uh, function is executed. And what we're using is remove child at 1, and that's index 1. And you should be asking yourself the following questions. The display list basically is an array. And don't all arrays start at zero? Why do I have a one right here? And the, and the answer to that is, is pretty simple. If you take a look at the graphic itself, let me bring that up so you can see it. Before you even put the balls on the stage, you've set a button on the stage. And so that button is actually in position zero. Okay? So that's why you're actually removing one. But wait a second, now you got to ask another question. And this is really important when it comes to working with indexes. And that's, uh, wait a second, I'm only removing the first ball. Why are all the balls removed upon succession? So I've got a little graphic for you to look at and it explains it very well. Let's bring that graphic up for you to take a look at. Okay, one second here. Just bear with me as I get everything straight here. Okay, I've arranged everything in terms of display list, and what you have here basically is your first position right there. That's position zero. Let me bring it from here. There we go. So I've arranged everything in terms of display list. So what you have in your first uh, display list position, position zero, is the button. Then each time you ha add a child, okay, then you actually add another ball. So that's the second position. That's, yes, and that's the third position. And that's the fourth position. And remember, arrays start at the number zero. So it's actually array number zero, one, two, and three. So I'm going to remove any of these by just referencing their array number. In this particular case, I'm actually referencing array number one. So I'm using remove child at one. So what does that mean? Well, when I click on that, it actually removes that child. So let's go back to my uh, cursor here. And it takes it off the stage. That's good. So it removes it from the position here. That's good. But what happens now is these balls rearrange themselves. They have to change the position. And so this now becomes your new one. And this now becomes your new two. So we'll go ahead and put our new one in here. And our new two. And so when I hit remove child one again, it's going to remove the next ball, of course. And it removes that. And now this third ball that was generated now becomes goes to position 1. Let's remove that. And 
and that's now your position one. Okay, so uh, this is good if you're working with uh, known objects, but it can become problematic when you have thousands of objects on the stage and you're not sure what their index numbers are, and when you remove one, everything rearranges. So you can see where index can be helpful for simple things, but for complex situations, you're going to want to reference by name. Now, before we move on to that topic, let's do just a little bit more with indexing by number. So we have a problem here, and that is that once the ball is instantiated, it always has the same name. It's instantiated three times as we iterate through 0, 1, 2. And uh, we don't actually know what that name is supposed to be because it's always the same my ball. So what Flash does is it, is, it assigns an instance name to it, and we're going to take a look at what that instance name is. And the way you do that is just basically take out this little line of code here. Let me uncomment it. And it's called trace my ball dot name. We're going to run this code and take a look at the instance names as they're generated and which ones Flash is assigning to them. So let's go ahead and run this. And here we go right here. We've created our you know column of balls and if we look, take a look at the output window here, we can see Flash has assigned the name instance 7, instance 9, and instance 11. Let's use these instance names essentially to remove a ball from the stage. So I'm going to go back to the code, get out of this, and let's go to the code. And in my take away function, I have remove child at one. Let's go ahead and comment that out. And I'm going to use remove uh, child, uh, and then we we'll use get child by name instance name nine. So that was the middle ball. Now, very important here. Uh, when I first started doing this process of remove child, uh, I was very frustrated because I put the instance name in there to remove it, and it wouldn't be removed. And that's because you need this method get child by name, and then put the name of the uh, child in there and then use remove child. So you need those two methods to make this occur. So now we have that in there. Let's go and run the program, see what happens. Okay. And when we click that, the middle one is removed. So that's how it works. And uh, it's pretty nifty. So let's go back to the code real quick and see if there's anything else we need to take a look at. And I believe that's it for now. Uh, but you can see there's the, some of the problems here, of course, is the fact that um, as you do, these names uh, are not intuitive and they're not programmed so that you might know what they might be. So if you've got 2,000 objects on the stage and they're all assigned by Flash, who knows what they are? So uh, this uh, is, though interesting, is not as useful because you really need to do everything programmatically and dynamically. And to do that, you need to assign your own name. So let's go to that next. So as we've mentioned earlier, we want to be able to reference these balls by name. So we want to actually give them an, their instance name. And that's very easy to do. I'm going to come along here and comment a piece of code out here. Let's take it out. And it's myball.name equals basically a text concatenation with a number, myball plus i, the number of the iteration. So you're going to go through iteration 0, 1, and 2. So you're going to be adding a 0. It will be myball0, myball1, and myball2. So when we run this, let's see what we get in the output window. So there's my column of balls. And let's check out the output window real quick here. And I didn't get anything, so what did I do wrong? <laughs> let's go back and check that out again. One second, let's go back to actions. I want to trace the name, okay. <laughs> Stick that out, run it again. And there we go. Now that makes me feel happy. So I'll bring that down so you can see that. And there it is, my ball zero, my ball one, and my ball two. Good. So we've got that working, but now we want to be able to remove by those names, and that's pretty simple to do. We'll go do that right now, and we'll be finished up here pretty soon. Let's go down here to uh, the last part. So you can see I in this present code, I'm removing by index 1. So let's go ahead and comment that out. And let's uncomment this line of code. And I want to remove by my ball 1. That's the name that I've assigned it. So I have three balls, 0, 1, and 2. And this is 1, so this is the middle ball. And so when I run this code, I should actually remove the middle ball. Let's see if it works. Click, and the middle ball is removed. So this really is more powerful than all the methods I've shown so far. Now, I do use indexing to remove objects in paper vision, and that's very handy. But when you come to large numbers of objects and things that's complex, it's nice to know their names and be able to control the adding and removing uh, through uh, names and basically by indexing names. That way you don't have this stacking order problem that occurs sometimes with indexing. So it's great. I typically... Uh, I definitely uh, would use both methods, but this one I would rely on as my system becomes more complex because I need to know the name, I need to be able to grab those names and treat them dynamically. 